Have you ever come across an audio plugin control that says MS or mid side? This is the sum and difference control. Although sum and difference is the proper terminology to use, usually mid side is what's on the label. The sum of a stereo audio signal refers to its center information. This is the signal that's divided equally among the two stereo channels, which creates what is known as a phantom center channel. This is also called mid or sometimes lateral. Here are a few examples. Now the difference of a stereo audio signal is the opposite of the sum. It is the difference between the two channels, whereby you take both the left and right channels, then flip the polarity of one of them. Here's an example of what I mean. Watch how only the sides of the stereo image come up. When processing some indifferent signals, it's how they're combined after processing that's key. Explaining the math behind how all of this works really isn't that important, but if you're curious, I'll link to a post by GearSluts user NLC201 for his thorough and concise explanation. So, this plugin that I'm using here, Voxengo MSED, allows you to encode a mid-side signal, aka split it up, so that you can use any plugin with mid-side processing. And then, it decodes it back to a standard stereo signal, with all these options right here. So I've already set up my routing in a, inside of Reaper to get this working. These three tracks right here, I have a send that takes both of the signals, from these two tracks. I have my master parent send disabled on both plugins. This one, I have it panned all the way to the left because this is my mid signal. And I know that because Voxengo, when it does its thing, that's all you hear on the left side. And then inside of the Voxengo plugin, you see that I have the side muted so I only have the mid signal going up in mono. And then after that, I can process any plugin I want. And the reason I have it that way is because not every plugin has a control to just manipulate the left or the right channels. If your plugin can do that, you don't need to do this whole process. If it can, all you have to do is put your plugin, like for example, this plugin right here, Slick EQ, you can affect just the left side, which is the mid side. And the way you do that is you click this right here, you hit left, and then you're done. 
Now, because Slick EQ allows you to do some indifference, you just choose that if you really want to do it. You don't even have to use the Voxengo plugin. But if you have a plugin that you can choose just the left or right side, then you can just put your plugin between two instances of MSED, have the one on encode, and then it'll actually split your signal. Oh, I guess I'll play that for you guys so you can hear it. So actually, I got to route this back to the master channel and mute this. So hold on. And here we go. That's not what I was looking for. Hold on. Oh, I, I remember now. I have this set so it's only outputting there. So now it'll do what, it's, what it normally does. It's hard to hear the right side because it's so quiet, but it's definitely there. And like I said, you can just manipulate this. So let me do it how I was just explaining it. So decode. And then I'll choose the left channel so you can hear it. I already did that. All right. And then I'm going to... Enable this and listen what I'm doing. I'll just lower the volume so you can hear it drastically. So you can hear you can hear how the center channel is being decreased. Um, obviously, I would normally use this for equalization, but yeah, that just shows you the possibility that if your plugin supports left and right channel solo manipulation, then you can use this plugin just like that. Otherwise, you got to do it how I already had it set up. So let me set it back up to how I had it, which is inline mode, mute the sides turn my master off, put my send back on, and then pan that to the left side. It's important you have it set up this way, otherwise the whole thing won't work. Now this should work, theoretically. Sounds like it worked. <laughs> All right, so basically, like I said, you set it up so that your mid is going to the left channel, route it to the left channel. You set it up so your sides are routed to the right channel. And then on your send channel, you have it on decode mode. And it does its thing. This is, like I said, usually a mastering process. But there are some cool things you can do while mixing, which I'm going to get to right now. By the way, mid-side can also refer to a recording technique that was invented by a guy named Alan Blumlin. So the first trick you might want to try to do is to automate the sum and difference processing during a course with a few of your instruments like guitars, drums, string instruments to make them a little bit wider and a little bit brighter when those courses kick in and then if your song has a crescendo you can make it even wider and even brighter than the courses another cool trick is to boost the difference volume just a little bit with stereo recordings so piano acoustic guitar drum overheads etc like i said just a little bit whenever you're manipulating mid side you usually want to do it really subtly Another mastering tip is that you can reduce mix mud with a low shelf cut on the difference channels. If you recall from an older Real Home recording video titled Reverb Glue, I suggest adding a little reverb to an entire mix to help gel tracks together. Another trick to improve on that mix bus technique is to reduce the low end energy of the reverb in the mid signal. Doing this helps the bass energy of the kick drum and bass guitar stay strong, 
or whatever bass instruments you may have. If you want to brighten a track up, you can apply high frequency equalizer boost to just the sides so that your vocal doesn't start sounding too bright. And listen up because this is a secret that mastering engineers don't want me to reveal, but I'm going to anyway. If you're applying compression during mastering and things are sounding a little bit too squashed, try processing your difference signal with less gain reduction than your sum signal. As you can see on the stereoscope, and let me play this track again so you can see it, and I'll clear off the peak. One more light on Broadway. There's a lot more energy in the mid than there is in the sides. So when you compress this more and leave this alone or, or just don't re you know, reduce it as much, the mix stays wider, it sounds less squashed, it's a cool little trick to try. So yeah, I wanna thank Isotope for most of those tricks that I just talked about and I'll link to that article in the video description plus a few others that I didn't talk about that have great information about mid-side processing. There's a lot of creative things you can do. There's a lot of technical tasks that you can take care of. Another good example of this, I'll just do it right away. This mix, I think the vocal sounds a bit too loud. So what I can do is just grab this mid-gain knob and I'll, I'll, I'll adjust it while it's playing so you can hear what it does. But I'm gonna bring down the volume of the vocal without having access to the vocal tracks. It also brings down anything else that's in the center, but you listen to it. Earlier I was messing with this mix and I think about negative two decibels sounds a lot better. So let's play it. I like negative one better than negative two actually, but you can see the power of that. If you don't have access to the original mix tracks, which I guess you should, but if you're a mastering engineer, a lot of times it's just a lot quicker to adjust the mid. You know, you can bring up the sides. Let's listen to what happens when I bring the sides up. All right, I think you guys got the idea. Definitely try this out on your next mix or master because it can do cool things for you, especially manipulating that difference channel will help with making your mixes sound bigger and more professional. These guys who are, are at the top of their game have been doing this stuff for years and it's time for you to start doing it. This has been Adam for realhomerecording.com.